just got to get that mercy down up through the course. It. It's great. Perfect. <laughs> All right. Um, cool. Any questions? <coughs> The waters that keep rising up, the floods that call. Put your hope in the Lord, put your hope in the Lord. He will lead us all the way. The kingdom is coming. Mm, we are praying for it. The kingdom is coming. Yeah. We are waiting for it. Churches, all you kings, come and join the work. He's restoring all things. Put your hope in the Lord. Put your hope in the Lord. He will lead us all the way. The kingdom is coming. We are praying for it. The kingdom is coming. We are waiting for. Kingdom is coming, yeah. In all creation. 
Knox Presbyterian Church, good morning. It's good to be together today. If I've not met you, my name is Drew, uh, and if you've not heard this before, uh, this might feel a little bit uncomfortable for me to say how loved you are. You matter so stinking much. You are so valuable. This is not because of anything that you've done. It's not based on anywhere you are right now, if you're joining us here in person or if you're joining us virtually. This is based on the truth that you are a child of God created in a beautiful image. And it's because of this that we, in our worshiping community, choose to express our faith in God through self-giving love. This is what's been given to us. And so this is the way we try to be as well. Uh, I have just a couple things to go over before we begin with worship. The first is my one-year-old, Maeve, is asleep in the pastor's study right now. Uh, we had some childcare stuff fall through, and so she will at some point be joining us in worship. Um, I thought about waking her up, and then decided that would be a bad idea. So at some point, you'll see me leave and bring her back in. Thank you to those of you who, uh, whether you've already agreed to it or whether you're going to be uh, voluntold to do it, maybe helping her not die uh, while we're in worship today. Um, do we still have vegetables in the garden? If, uh, if on your way out you want to do a little harvesting for you or for someone else who needs locally grown produce, uh, our little garden just outside here is ripe for the picking. Have at it. Go for it. Um, yesterday and the day before, Liv, say hi, Liv. This is Liv. Liv and I uh, had the privilege of joining several other worshiping communities in a newly formed cohort that is focused on helping us as churches develop a more faithful presence in our neighborhoods. This is through an organization called Parish Collective. Knox has been accepted into this collective, or rather into this cohort that will run a uh, course of three years. We'll meet multiple times over the next 12 months. Uh, Liv and I were there all day Friday, all day yesterday with some other folks, about 15 of us, and it was really great. Um, and so I just wanted to share that uh, as a way of saying this is one of the things that's going on in the life of our church, and I'm excited to continue to come back and report to you and our leadership the various things that we learned. It, w it went pretty well, right? We, took, we got some good takeaways, yeah. 
Um, August, our session did not meet. Uh, if you've been around here for a while, you know that we've been having some pretty big conversations around uh, the topic of land stewardship. In particular, how are we as a, as a congregation, as a church, being called to steward this land, God's land, in a way uh, that provides for the tangible needs of our community? And we've been looking at some transformative ideas, like creating some kind of housing, creating mixed-use space that can provide for the needs of the community. The last time we talked about that as a congregation was a little bit ago, and I'm just wanting to let you know that's still being talked about. We're still continuing to discern that, still moving forward there. Um, we just had a little hiatus in, uh, in August. So uh, be paying attention for more updates that forthcoming. Is there anything else we need to talk about? Great. I'm going to turn things over to Pastor Taylor, who's going to center us for worship. Thank you. Good morning. <laughs> um, <clears throat> one note uh, before we sort of enter into worship. You'll see there's a bit of a typo in the first verse of the first song. Uh, the uh, third line down should say, Oh love, how deep, how high, how broad. If you get there and you just sing the letter T, that's probably fine. <laughs> um, but just it, it rhymes with God. So if you don't remember broad, you know, whatever word that rhymes with God, I guess, enter it there. Um, we worship a God who, while we were yet sinners, in other words, while we were those who actively harmed relationship, uh, participated in things that did not reflect uh, the whole and healthy humans we are meant to be, uh, nor the whole and healthy world that we've been given, even while we were actively living against God's desires for ourselves and for the world, God came to us in Christ and died for us, showed us the cost of healing this world, healing our hearts, healing our lives, and raised us to new life with himself that we might experience the reconciliation of God, not only in our own relationship with God, but in our communities, in our cultures, and in our world. And so as we enter into worship this morning and as, as we do sing praise to this God who will not, has not, nor will ever leave us alone, but forever pursues us, draws us near, allows us to participate in healing and wholeness, let us take a few breaths to welcome the spirit of that creating and recreating God into our hearts, into this space, recognizing that we are all each here, we, but we are also all here together as God's children. So let us take a few breaths and then we'll join in singing.
be seated. Uh, our scripture readings for today that we're going to get to in a little bit both condemn withholding forgiveness and passing judgment on others. So for our prayer of confession, let us confess the ways we have done these things, the ways we have passed judgment, and the ways that we have failed to forgive as we ourselves have been forgiven. Let's pray. Gracious God, you have forgiven all our sins, canceled all our debts, even though we do not deserve it. And though we continue to sin again and again, you continue to show us love and mercy. Freely, we have received your grace, and we know our faithful response is to freely give to others what you have given to us. And yet, there are times when we find this hard to do. When others hurt us, we withhold forgiveness. When our siblings in Christ owe us debts that some of them may never be able to be repaid, we keep the receipts. We cause rifts in our relationships by withholding love, mercy, and forgiveness. We judge others for their actions, declaring in our hearts their unworthiness of having their own debts canceled. Who are we to pass judgment on others when all have sinned and fallen short of your glory? In the silence of our hearts, hear our prayers as we confess the ways in which we have judged and not forgiven. Blessed are the merciful, blessed are the merciful, blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the merciful, blessed are the merciful, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. 
gracious God who freely forgives all our sin even though we don't deserve it. Now, fulfill within every heart your promise of redeeming grace and removing all our sin. Cleanse us from the weight of shame and guilt through the perfect sacrifice of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Psalm 103 says, The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. I declare to you in the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. As you are able, friends, I invite you to stand in body or in spirit as we sing together. No fate I dread, we know we are forgiven. No fate I dread, I know I am forgiven. The future sure, the price it has been paid. For Jesus' name. Good morning, Max. Uh, as I've been praying this week, I've been continually reminded of the importance and the beauty and joy of community. Um, and I know that this community of Knox has been huge for myself and I know for many others as well. Um, and part of community is sharing in our daily joys and sorrows. So this morning, um, I will open us with a prayer, and then I want to open for us to share what we are bringing into this space, joys or sorrows, or any prayer requests that we have on our hearts and minds this morning. Um, so I want to start with prayers for individuals, families, community members, and then we'll move into prayers for our community and our region. And then lastly, prayers for our world and for creation. Um, between each section, um, we as a congregation will affirm the prayers. I'll lead with, Lord, in your mercy, and you'll respond with, here are our prayers. Um, Lois is going to come around with a microphone so that we can share our prayers, not only with our congregation in person, but also those who are joining us virtually, and so that we can hear all right. Um, I'll begin with a prayer. Dear Lord, we come to you in this space with all that we have carried this week weighing on our hearts. We ask that your presence be known to us. Please meet us here with your grace and provision. We trust that you are our provider and creator, continuing to nurture our faith until completion. Lord, in your mercy, 
Would you hear our prayers that we bring before you today? At this time, I want to lift the prayers of our congregation, beginning with individuals or community members. Yes, we have uh, two in our community. Your members here at uh, Knox, uh, Dick Raymond, uh, going through uh, chemo right now and very uh, torturous journey up there as we speak. Uh, hopefully uh, tomorrow his uh, chemo will continue. And then for Carol Stewart's niece, Erica, who also is going through a similar uh, cancer and, and essentially uh, with a starting possibly a new uh, chemotherapy. So just for God's chemo to take effect, that's the prayer. Amen. Any other more uh, individual scope prayers? Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And now for our community and our region. I would like to pray for those folks that were caught up in the fires and stuff uh, the last couple of weeks and in just losing everything and give them the strength that we know through the Lord and to uh, let them see it through. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And um, for our world and for creation. Well, I'm going to share a praise. I was on my walk this morning with my dogs, and we were down on some trails in Riverside State Park and walking along the trail. Fortunately, we were upwind from what I saw, but there were three deer just in the woods right next to the trail watching us. My dogs did not see them or smell them, which was a very good thing, but it just made me smile to see that right there, so close. Any other prayers we want to lift up? Over the last couple of weeks, our family has gone through a few issues. Our daughter-in-law spent 10 days in the hospital with diverticulitis, and it abscessed and it was leaking into her bloodstream. And um, she got home. They were able to go in and get a drain tube in this. And uh, it, was, it was scary. She got home Tuesday. She still has the drain tube in, will for probably another week. Um, it can be quite serious. They were, it, it was just through prayers that they were able to reach it without having to actually go in and do full surgical removal. Um, she's still on antibiotics, but uh, seems to be coming around and doing just fine. And the, through the prayer chain through this church, through Knox, um, I know that the surgeon's hands uh, were being guided um, by our Lord. Um, and in the middle of all of this, one of our other sons, uh, his wife's car was stolen out of their driveway. Um, they got it back because he heard them, ran out, tried to stop them, but they took off. But they must have afraid that he saw them. Apparently this was a group that was stealing cars. They'd already gotten another one two blocks up the street from them. Um, it, it's just been a heck of a week. <laughs> and and uh, through God's grace we've made it through and it seems to be 
and we are so appreciative of this this community here and all of your prayers. Thank you. Just the continued war in Ukraine, flooding in Libya, earthquakes in Morocco. There's just a lot going on in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <clears throat> Lord, thank you for the community of Knox. Thank you for the care this group has for each other and our community. May you continue to provide for your people and your creation today and always. Amen. At this time, uh, as we continue in worship, uh, we will sing the doxology as a way of praising God and recognizing that all we are, all we have, is indeed from God. And in response, we respond as God has given graciously to us, so we respond gratuitously um, of the giving of ourselves back to God, our, our tithes, our offerings, um, our prayers, spoken and unspoken. So I invite you to stand as we sing the doxology together, and then you were invited to come forward to bring the offering of yourself or a prayer by lighting a candle um, or of your tithes and offerings. So let us stand as we sing together. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Praise God above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. 
Our first scripture reading today comes from Romans chapter 14. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day observe it in honor of the Lord, and those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God, while those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your siblings? Or you, why do you despise your siblings? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then, each of us will be accountable to God. The word of the Lord. Nothing to see down here. Thanks, KJ, for reading and holding my baby. Our second scripture reading for today is our gospel lectionary text, and it uh, falls, or follows, hot on the heels of last Sunday's text. You're not going to listen to anything that I'm saying today, are you? You're just going to be looking over here. The, the text from last week was... Um, the most didactic set of instructions that you're ever going to hear Jesus give. Here's the step-by-step process by which you have uh, reconciliation, forgiveness, wholeness with your siblings in Christ. Um, And the story continues today uh, with a question from one of his disciples, uh, further indicating that this was a little bit more of like a, a, you know, teaching moment where it's teaching and we're asking questions question's a good one, and then Jesus gives a story. Uh, We're going to see how this goes. Uh, So if I can't get to it clearly enough, uh, the main point of everything that I'm about to say is God forgives us. We forgive one another. It's been given, and we give. It's been forgiven, and we forgive. All right, this is Matthew chapter 18. I'm going to read verses 21 through 35. It goes like this. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, which is what they had just been talking about, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him, and as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions, and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave the entire debt. 
But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So, my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. This is, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? Now, O Lord, prepare our hearts to receive your word. Silence within us any voice but your own, that in hearing we may obey your will. We acknowledge, Lord, that this is but one interpretive lens through which your word is proclaimed and so in that acknowledgement, help us to be gracious and understanding with people in our lives who see things differently. Amen. I'm spilling up here more than you are down there. Okay, there's a lot in this story. I'll just say first and foremost, I don't like it when Jesus uses slaves, either literally or uh, as an illustration. Not a big fan of slavery. You can quote me on that. Um, and I'm not going to make apologies for the cultural context in which this is written in the ways that Jesus and God always meets us where we're at. The piece about this that is the most like cringe worthy is right there at the very end at least it is for me or it is when I was reading it this time and in anger his lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt this is also how my heavenly father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart torture um, I believe in an all good, all loving God, and texts like this uh, I wrestle with. It's hard for me to really know what's being said here. So in wrestling with it, uh, I wanted to tell you a little bit about forgiveness and what lack of forgiveness tends to do to us. Uh, and then I'd like to share a story from my own life about this. I don't know that we can necessarily call it torture, but if someone, if someone hurts you, someone offends you, if someone does you wrong, where there is need for reconciliation, where there is need for forgiveness, that does something to you. You, the offended, in your body, mind, and spirit, it has an impact on you. We keep receipts, conscious and unconscious. Someone hurts you. It's not just that individual moment of hurt that is harmful to your body, mind, and soul. 
there is an ongoing wound, an ongoing affliction that whether you are aware of it or not is kind of eating away at you. Again, I don't know that I could define this as, as torture, but there's at least some torment that happens in our lives. Uh, Miroslav Volf is one of the uh, leading figureheads in our society on the concept of forgiveness and talks about us being uh, people of forgiveness, not just people who can forgive one time and another, but actually enter into, now this is my language, a posture of forgiveness. An attitude of forgiveness might be one where you just kind of put on a brave face and say, all right, even though they I don't feel like they deserve it, I'm going to forgive them. A posture of forgiveness takes time. It takes practice. And much in the same way that a physical posture, you may not know that your uh, posture isn't very good until someone else points it out to you. And this is also what God is doing, partly through this text in our lives, to point out uh, postures of forgiveness help us to live with a whole lot more freedom, a whole lot more ability just to be ourselves. Forgiveness in one sense is a mending of a relationship. Again, Miroslav Volf says the most complete form of forgiveness would have us uh, give, and then that forgiveness is received. And that's not always possible, right? For many reasons. Someone's actually not going to say sorry before you offer to forgive them. Someone has passed away who has hurt you, who's not able to receive the forgiveness that you have to offer. That's the kind of forgiveness, the kind of wrongdoing that requires forgiveness that I want to talk to you about. When we can forgive, it's like we are canceling that person's debt in our life and no longer allow that hurt and torment to live rent-free in our bodies, minds, and souls. It's conscious. Sometimes, for some of us, realizing like, oh yeah, this person really messed me up and uh, I'm aware of that and I think about it all the time. For others of us, maybe our posture has been going on for so long we don't even realize how stooped we are. We don't even realize how much that hurt actually continues to torment us, at least until it's forgiven. So um, let me tell you a story. Um, I went to Whitworth, I graduated in 2011, and um, when I was a sophomore, partway through my sophomore year, uh, I got a phone call from uh, my family. We had a family meeting of two sisters, mom and dad, and uh, went, went home, grew up in Colbert, about 20, 30 minutes, 20 th or 30 minutes north of where Whitworth is. Okay, okay, okay. Well, Taylor needs those things. We're not gonna, we're not gonna just completely do that. Why don't you come over here? The family meeting um, was to inform us that my youth pastor, uh, who is extremely influential for me, my mentor, my probably my most trusted uh, elder, shared everything with, um, the meeting was to tell us that he had had an affair, which was uh, tough to hear. <coughs> the, the kicker was that uh, the affair that he had had was with my mom, which was not great to hear. Uh, so there was this deep and um, my mom um, was there when she told us this. And with a repentant heart and with a huge amount of bravery for her to actually come to her own children and admit and just name the ways that she had failed, 
uh, I almost immediately found it within myself to be able to just forgive her. The same uh, didn't uh, necessarily happen for my relationship with my youth pastor, Joe. I don't know that it was because I was actively trying to hold something uh, for myself, hold on to that receipt, hold on to that debt, or if it was because I just didn't, I didn't want to deal with it anymore. Uh, years went by. He wasn't in my life anymore. He wasn't reaching out. I eventually moved to L.A. But I realized, like, once a month, at least, I would think about him. I would think about what had happened. And it was, it wasn't torturous for me, but it was like this little poke, this little jab that every time would make me realize that he's, he's just continuing to hurt me. He's hurt me so much. And this is continuing to bring me unrest. This is continuing to make it so difficult for me to have peace in my life. One day, um, I just, I decided to call him. It had been, um, like, can you reach the flames? No, you can't. You're fine. If you want to give her some more, like, little snacky snacks, she might like those. Thanks, KJ. The, the phone call went fine. Um, but I called him just to say, I forgive you. And for that, uh, for me, that had a lot more to do with me than it did him. He was, he was repentant. Uh, he actually talked much longer than I wanted him to uh, about how sorry he was because I was, just, I was kind of over it. I, I just knew that I needed to wholly and completely forgive this guy so that I could be free, so I could stop walking around like this. He didn't occupy a whole lot of brain space for me, but my gosh, after I had forgiven him, I realized how much of my soul this hurt had been occupying. I, uh, I preach on forgiveness not infrequently, and I don't know that I've ever really shared this full story, partly because I don't really like putting myself in the center of a story where, like, I did the good thing, look at Drew, good job. Um, but this is something that uh, has shaped who I am. My posture is one of forgiveness uh, to a fault at times. And I love the lightness. I love the freedom. I love the, uh, the ability to be able to cancel the debt so that it no longer bugs me. And I, th I think that this is what Jesus wants for us as well. And I'm not here to be the one to tell you that in every single instance of hurt, in your life that you need to call up your oppressor and forgive them right now because I don't know what that was like. I don't know what happened. What happened for me, yeah, that, that was kind of a doozy, um, but there's a lot, other, a lot more other things out there that I know you've gone through that would be very difficult to forgive, whether that person is ready to receive it or not. And yet we uh, are called to be these people of forgiveness. It took me seven years to forgive Joe. Um, and maybe I needed that time. And maybe you need whatever kind of time you're working on right now. But what I'd like for us to do for the rest of this time is to try to practice forgiveness. Uh, you should have a bulletin and there should be a writing utensil somewhere near you. There's a lot of space in the back of your bulletin for writing. Today, right now, in the space of the next five minutes or so, I'm going to ask you to do something by yourself. We're not sharing these. Uh, but even though this is going to be by yourself, this is going to be vulnerable work. I'm going to ask you to think about someone in your life right now for whom uh, maybe you think God is calling you to have some forgiveness because of something they did. 
maybe because of something they did to you. I want you to think about that person. I want you to think about the wrongdoing that occurred. This is where the deep vulnerability comes in. Take some breaths when you're doing this. And then if you're feeling especially vulnerable and especially brave, um, maybe just jot down a few words that kind of um, in, encapsulates or captures that person and that offense. And underneath that, write the words, I forgive you. You don't have to necessarily feel like you're having a transformative moment in this. You don't have to necessarily feel like this is something that God is changing your heart in right now. But just to write it out as a way of trying to practice forgiveness, just to see what it looks like. I forgive you. And then uh, after you've done that, we're just going to spend some time in prayer, silently, individually. We're praying for God to help us with those words. This is not easy. So we need help. And so you're going to write what it is. I forgive you. And then the rest of the time, you're just praying, God, help me to be a person with the posture of forgiveness, the same posture that you have for us. Even though we sin and have hurt you so many times, you still find it within your heart to be the forgiving God for us. Help us to cancel these debts. Help us, help me to be the sort of person who can forgive so that I can actually live more fully, more abundantly, more wholly. Okay. About five minutes.
thank you, God, for your mercy, for your forgiveness. Show your mercy through us. Holy Spirit, thank you that you do not leave us to do this alone. But that just as Jesus said, come to me, all you who are burdened, and I shall give you rest, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus, you have taken the burden of sin on our behalf and for us. And so through your spirit, we hand over to you the ways, the areas, the people, the places in our hearts which need your forgiveness. Thank you that we need not do this alone, that you are with us, Holy Spirit, and that we do this together as your beloved children. And so together, God, we testify that we are indeed one in you we will walk together we will not let one another fall but uphold one another and support one another we will forgive one another and love one another and it's in this that the world will know your love the love that we see in Jesus that came not to condemn the world but the world might experience deep healing and wholeness through you. In your name we pray. Amen. Friends, as you are able, I invite you to stand as we sing our sending song. They'll know we are Christians by our love.
that it will. <laughs> Friends, as you go out from here, take this blessing with you. May God bless you and keep you. May God shine light upon you and be gracious to you. May you experience the presence of God within you now and always, and may that give you deep peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.